Hi everyone, it's Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio and tonight's YouTube Live. I am so excited that you're here with me. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you're coming back, I'm so glad that you've returned. I've got a background technique for you today that is not expected and I cannot wait to share with you the tips that I've learned creating it myself. In addition to the background technique, I've got a great coloring technique for you today too as far as um, glitter paper is concerned. Make sure you hang with me to the end of the video because I have four other cards to share with you using this exact same suite of products. Now, a couple things. If you are here for the live event and you would like to chat with us, you'll need to sign in to your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That is a requirement of YouTube. It's not a Lisa thing. And for those of you watching the replay, you can read those um, chats if you sign into your YouTube account as well. So it doesn't matter if you're here for the live or the replay. I also wanna let you know that when the live is over tonight, Megan and I are gonna come back. Megan's my assistant. I'll introduce you to her in just a minute. And we're gonna put a link down below the title in this video so that you can find the pictures, the cutting dimensions for today's card there so that you can mimic it at home. Also, this gives me a chance to introduce you to Megan. Megan is my YouTube live assistant and she is here to help moderate and answer your questions because honestly, while I'm stamping, it is impossible to catch them all. Megan's name is here in blue, and she will interact with you and be able to help you with things that maybe I can't get to. All right, I think we're ready. I'm excited to share this card with you. I've been looking forward to this time all day together. I hope you're doing well, and I hope that you're stamping. And if you're not, I'm hoping that I can inspire you. And if you are, I've got some great tips for you tonight. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna turn the camera down. Okay, and let me just get you all zoomed in and straight so that we can get started. I've got another light on here to try to give you some um, extra lighting. I'm going to start by doing that background technique. And this is a little bit different than what I would typically use. This is shimmery white cardstock, and I am doubtful that that shimmer is going to show up here on camera. But boy, is this stunning. You're going to be able to find this as well as all the other products I'm using tonight over at lisasstampstudio.com in my online store. Just click shop. This paper is gorgeous. Here's another tip for you about the shimmery white cardstock. You not only can stamp on it, but you can use your Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers on it and watercolor on it. It is stunning and that shimmer shows through. I'm gonna recommend you protect your work surface for this because we're gonna be doing a little bit of overage stamping, which I'm gonna need this for. And this background technique, I'm going to be using a sponge dauber. I love these because your fingers go up inside, makes it super easy to use. And I'm going to use a little bit darker color than I would normally use because I noticed with the shimmery paper, that shimmer does show through. And I want to make sure that this is subtle. I don't want it to be too, too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and use crushed curry for this. But you're going to see me use a different yellow on the rest of this card. Now for this background te technique, we're gonna use something really different. It is a dye. Now this dye is coming from the Honey Bee Bundle, which is the stamp set and the coordinating detailed bee dyes. Now I've got quite a few dyes pulled out that we're gonna to use together tonight. But you may not have known this, but you can use your dyes as a stencil. And I wanna give you some tips that I've learned along the way. And if you've got tips that you can share with us, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to learn from each other. So I'm going to put my finger up inside the dauber. I'm going to position this die with the cutting edge up. I prefer to leave the smooth side on my cardstock because I am going to be moving it around. I also find that it works better for me that way because obviously there's a really small margin of leverage here between the cutting edge and the flat side of the die. So I'm going to leave this facing up. I love the sponge dauber for this because you can see how narrow this is and it's going to allow me to get into detailed areas. Now, when you go to load the ink for this project, I'm going to give you a couple tips. Keep in mind when you're coming right off the ink pad here, it's very, very concentrated. And I like to dab off some of that ink on my scratch paper so that I can control the coverage. There's nothing worse than starting too dark because you can't make it lighter, but you can always make it darker. So I'm gonna make sure that I've got this slightly lighter than I want. I'm going to line up my die here close to the upper left corner, which is where I'm choosing to start this project. And I am just gonna pounce up and down. Now I'm working inside those honeycombs. I'm trying to gravitate inside that area, which means I may not use these outside ones. You're gonna to wanna to avoid the outside circumference 
so that you don't have overage of just the straight lines. Now you can use a piece of um, washi tape if you want to hold it down. I just like to use my fingers because I don't want to reposition the washi tape each time. And again, I'm just looking to get light and dark areas. None of these open areas have to be the same consistency of color. I'm also going to tell you, this is another thing I've learned. When you move this dye, you may notice it's lighter and darker than you expected. Remember, too, that you can always go back over an area if you've just slightly taken a peek and pivoted. I like it subtle because, to me, I think that looks a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to do the exact same here. I'm going to load up that dauber, and I'm going to tap off. And I'm going to add a little bit darker consistencies this time. Again, working with inside the margin of this die. This is just another great way for you to use your dies and be able to expound on your investment. So you can see here we've got some background going on. The great thing about this honeycomb pattern is it's going to allow you to kind of pivot this and place this in areas where you want it. I am not going to reload my dauber right now. Let me move up so you guys can see me a little bit better. And I'm not going to reload too much, let's put it that way, because I want to make sure that I don't have it too, too dark. And then I'm going to make it lighter as we gravitate here towards the bottom. So I've got a little bit of a symmetrical kind of color tone going here. The great thing about this, too, is you can use different colors. So in other words, if you want to do a rainbow effect, you can start with one color and then change as you gravitate. Very important, two things. You need to use a separate dauber for each color, otherwise you're going to have a muddy mess. Number two... You're going to want to make sure that you have a baby wipe nearby because you're going to want to clean off that dye before you change colors because obviously the one color can be picked up onto the next onto your cardstock. Now you can also take this directly on your Stampin' Chamois or your Stampin' Scrub to clean it. It does not hurt it because this is metal. You can even run this under regular tap water and just let it air dry and it's good to go over and over again. So that's just a quick tip for you about your dyes. A really fun way to get an abstract background with lot, without a lot of effort. So let's close this up now. I've got my fingers wet now from that baby wipe. Bear with me. I'm going to set that off to the side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some cardstock. This is another piece of shimmery white cardstock here. And this is where I'm going to be doing my stamping. You may recall that I said I'm going to be using a different color yellow than I did on that background. And this is Daffodil Delight. I want my beehive to look a little bit more true to color. So I'm going to use this color instead. And of course, you can do them the same. This is just this is just a preference I'm going to be using. Here is that adorable beehive. I love this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink this up. I want to give you a tip about these larger images. Oftentimes, you may find your ink pad is light in the center. And that's because we have a habit of wanting just to ink it here. There's ink everywhere. Travel. Cover that whole stamp using ink around the outside edges. You'll get better even coverage as well. And then I'm going to stamp that here near the bottom of the scrap cardstock. I'm going to trace out that pattern to try to get a really good solid image. And then we've got our beehive. Now I'm just going to take that off camera. And on the same piece of paper now, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to stamp some bees. And I'm going to be using my Memento Black ink pad for that. Let me take off that cover there. I'm trying to get you a little bit closer so that you can see better. Now this is all from that exact same stamp set. This adorable bee is one of the images in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up. Now the one reason I love this image is they look so realistic. So I'm gonna stamp one here and I'm gonna stamp another here. I'm leaving room between these for a reason. And I'm gonna share that with you. So I'm gonna take that stamp off camera as well. And now we're gonna do a little bit of coloring before we go through the die cutting process. I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit because I want you to be able to see the coloring method that I'm gonna be using on this bee. Now they're both gonna be the same, so we're gonna just focus on one for right now. I'm gonna be using the Stampin' Blends markers. This is the Daffodil Delight. It's the one thing I absolutely love about the Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink matches the marker, that matches the cardstock and so on and so forth. So you don't have to worry about colors mixing and not looking the same. So the color coordination is fantastic. There is a light and a dark shade. I prefer to use the chisel tip here on these small detailed areas, but there's also a brush tip here. So if you've got a large area that you're covering, you have a selection here, which makes it a lot easier for you to use. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the lightish shade first. That's my personal preference. And like I said, the shimmery white cardstock is fantastic to color on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off and I'm gonna add color here in these white areas of that bee. So just wanted to make it look like a little bit of a bumblebee. Now I've got them already finished for you, but I wanna show you how I did this on this one. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and just close that by just capping it. I'm going to move over to the darker shade. And this time I'm going to lay the dark color just on one side. So I'm going to put that and just stretch it out a little bit here. You're going to notice too that I've placed just a little on the top row, a little bit more on the middle row, and a little bit more at the very bottom row. So we've got a little bit of graduation in hue. This is a very small area. Now, typically when I use my Stampin' Blends markers, I will come back with the lighter shade and blend these two together. But because this is such a small area, it really isn't necessary. But just to give you an idea of what I mean, I'm gonna color right outside the area here so that you can see. Let's say we're coloring a big area, okay? That's the light shade. I do recommend that you let that alcohol evaporate from the paper for just a few seconds before you lay the next color. Two reasons, you're gonna have a better coloring experience because you're not rushing the process of the ink. And the second is, is if your marker is really juicy and brand new, like most of mine are, you have a tendency to have it bleed even though the ink will not run. So then what you'll do is you'll come in with your dark and then you'll lay that on one side, for instance. Again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you live that time to process. And then we can come back with the lighter shade and blend these two together. So there won't be a hard line here. So I'm gonna come back to the lighter shade and I'm gonna pull the dark into the light. Now I know it doesn't look like much now because what's gonna have to happen is it's gotta have time to process. But the hard differ differentiation between the light and the dark is actually gonna virtually disappear as it evaporates. So that's a great tip for you if you are at home. The best thing I can tell you about using alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers is take your time and enjoy the coloring process. They can be used individually, just like regular markers. And the one thing I love about them, unlike a dye-based marker that will leave streaks when you repeat an area, alcohol-based Stampin' Blends do not, which make them a coloring friend and they're really, really affordable. So that's a little bit about this. Now, let me show you the beauty of the coordination of this bundle. Now a bundle means that you're able to purchase the stamp set and the coordinating dies together. So that means you're gonna get a discount. So that's a 10% savings. And quite frankly, who's gonna to wanna to fussy cut these, right? I know I'm not going to. So we've got one here for the beehive and I've got another one here for that small bee. I will have to die cut this twice, which means one for this bee and one for this bee. But that's why I left space here because I wanna make sure that I don't have to restamp it all over again and color it. Now I wanna share one of my other favorite die cutting tips with you. Now on larger images, we don't have much difficulty lining this up to get it through our die cutting machine. But these smaller dies have a tendency to slip as you put your cutting mats on either side of this. So I like to use these post-it note flags. I've actually gotten questions if I sell these in my store. I, I don't, these are just post-it note flags. Post-it notes work as well. And I love these because I don't have to mess with washi tape and wasting it on my, my projects for die cutting. But you're gonna anchor it across the image, across the die, so that when you die cut it, it is assured not to twist and turn. And you can use as many of these flags on your dies as you want. It makes it so much easier and you don't have to redo your projects. Now, like I said, I have those pieces already done for you here. So we've got our two Bs. And I also have that beehive, aren't these cute? I absolutely love, love this bundle. I've had so much fun with it. All right, I'm gonna set those pieces off to the side for right now. And I wanna show you one other thing that I did. I'm gonna bring back in my scratch paper and those little bees. And let me show you here on the bigger piece because I think it's gonna be easier. I wanted sparkle to those bee wings. So I decided the easiest way for me to achieve that was with the Wink of Stella shimmer pen. I love this because it's self-contained. You don't need glue, you don't need glitter. It's already in the tip. This is available in my online store as well. It does have an alcohol base to it, so it's gonna evaporate and dry very, very quickly. The other fun thing about this is you're able to go over this numerous times to create more um, exaggeration of that shimmer. Now I wanna talk to you about this. Do you see how it's got a little bit of a black tip here? Because of the alcohol in here, it sometimes can pick up the pigmentation. So make sure you take it on your scratch paper and you wipe that tip off because you don't wanna put it away dirty and then transfer that color to another project. Boy, have I learned the hard way. And so I did that process before I die cut them because I found that to be a lot easier than trying to do it on this little tiny piece of paper here. All right, the next thing I did for my card is I wanted to create a fun focal point. And for this, I used some of my favorite dies. 
These are called the Stitched Shapes dies. And I love these because not only do you get graduating sizes of circles, now I took two of them out, they're here, and the ovals, but look at this, you're also going to get the squares. And they have that very trendy stitched frame around all these pieces. So I decided to actually use these together. So I've got a scrap piece of black cardstock here that's going to help coordinate this whole project together. I've got my large circle here, and I've got my small circle here. Now, again, this is where that post-it note flag is going to be a big help to you. And now, low-tech tape will work as well. I look visually. I don't go through the trouble of measuring because, quite frankly, that's not fun for me. But if, you're, if you love to measure, go for it. Once I get an idea that these look symmetrical all the way around, I tack them in place and I die cut them, just like I showed you with the bees. It's going to keep them from shifting. Then when you run it through your die cutting machine, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get this really fun ring. But it also has the stitching around the outside, which I love. So the center that comes out of here, we're not going to use for today's card, but certainly keep that for your next project. You're going to find that that comes in really handy. They have those pieces already die cut sometimes. All right, let's work on putting this card together. And like I said in the beginning, I have four other cards to share with you tonight using this exact same bundle of products. And I'm really loving those cards. So make sure you hang with me. The very first thing I want to do is I want to add the ring to this background technique that we've used. The easiest way to do this probably for most of you is to go ahead and use liquid glue. And since we're live and I don't wanna wait for glue to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and use my silicone craft sheet, which is one of my best friends. Liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it. You could put it on here and it'll rub right off because of the silicone surface. This is going to ensure that you're gonna keep your work table nice and clean and sticky free. Because quite frankly, if you're like me and you're in a hurry, which I am tonight for the live, I am going to put adhesive around this very narrow area. And if you were to do that here, guaranteed it's going to fall on your work surface and make a mess. So I'm going to do that right here upside down on my work surface here on the silicone craft sheet. I'm going to add adhesive all the way around. Any extra adhesive now has fallen here and it rubs right off, which means this is going to stay nice and clean. All right, now you can decide where you want this, but for tonight, I'm going to go ahead and put this just slightly off center and a little bit lower than normal. So I'm going to go ahead and just tack that in place. And again, liquid glue will work for you. Now, the next step for me is going to be adding my greeting. So let me slide that off to the side. And I will be honest with you, I did use um, do this before you joined me because I didn't take a chance at my age of trying to stamp that with you all watching me because my head has to be really close as I've gotten older. The greeting is from the same stamp set, and this is the same shimmery white cardstock. I'm going to add adhesive to the back side. Again, that silicone craft sheet for these narrow pieces is absolutely wonderful. This is the coordinating Daffodil Delight cardstock, and I am going to adhere this, leaving a very small margin all the way around. Like I said, you're going to find the cutting dimensions for this down in the link below this video. When I'm all done with the live tonight, you're going to need to give me just a few minutes. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this to this circle, but I wanted this to be visually interesting. So I'm going to flip this over, grabbing my dimensionals. These pre-cut pieces of foam tape are my best friend, so I don't have to gunk up my scissors. I'm going to place those on the back side. Now, you can pick off those paper backings or you can try this, which is my best friend. This is the Take Your Pick tool. There's a putty tip to help you pick up small pieces. And there's a paper piercing tool attachment. Now this dials out and it comes with also a stylus tool. So you can interchange this. It's the best $10 you'll ever spend. But watch what I do. I poke these and I lift these off because I have a hard time pulling off those small little tiny pieces. Plus it keeps them all wrangled for me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this greeting now here near the bottom. I want some of my circle to show. So I'm looking to align the left side as well as the right side. And then we're going to go ahead and tack that in place. Now, you remember our beehive? Well, this little hole here, I thought should be dark. So I'm like, okay, what can I do with that? So let's take that scrap piece of black cardstock that we were going to die cut that circle on. And I'm using the one inch circle punch. Now, I want to tell you about this punch as well as this bundle I'm using. They're on the Stampin' Up! Last Chance product list, which means they are being retired in a very short period of time. May 30, I'm sorry. June 3rd, the new catalog comes out. So June 2nd is the last day for most of these products. So I wanna add this behind here. 
So silicone craft sheet once again, and I'm going to add adhesive here across the top and across the bottom. And again, I'm working very, very close to the sides. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to gravitate this near the very, very bottom. And I want to show you, do you see how I filled that hole really cute? Got a little bit of a curve going on for the opening of our beehive. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add additional dimensionals to this because I want similar elevation as I have created for that greeting. But you're going to notice I didn't put them down here because of where I'm going to rest it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my take your pick tool again. We'll take off those backings. And then what we're going to do is attach this now to the card. I know I don't have dimensionals down here. So that's going to rest right around where my card stock is going to fall for that greeting. I want to make sure you stay within the perimeter of your card. That's really important. And then we're going to tack that in place. Now, I've got a couple other things I want to share with you. One is a cool coloring tip. Before I go there, I want to attach just one of my bees. So I'm going to take another of those dimensionals. I'm going to place that on the back. It fits perfectly. And then what I'm going to do is put that one bee with those beautifully glittered wings right here. Now, before I add my other bee, which is here, I want to teach you a really cool coloring technique for your glimmer paper. This is also retiring. I know, boo hiss, right? I'm going to really miss this because I love shimmer and shine. But oftentimes we want this a different color and it doesn't come in every color. So let me show you what I did. I am going to go back to that Crush Curry ink pad. Remember I did this for the background? And I'm choosing a darker shade than I typically would want for the card itself. Because one thing I have learned is as this dries, it lightens up a little bit. So sponge dauber again, you're going to ink that up. And this time you do not have to stamp off. We want the concentration of that color. And then you're going to pounce that right on top of here and fill that glimmer paper with color. I prefer to pounce than rub because I want to kind of preserve this. I don't want to rip it up because of the glittery finish. And I'm just going to cover an area I know big enough for what I'm going to die cut or in, in maybe in your case, it might be punching. So that's going to be plenty. This is going to need a little bit of time to dry if you are going to die cut. Boy, did I learn that. I got really excited and I put it through my die cutting machine with this adorable little double heart die that comes part of this whole bundle. And that yellow transferred to my cutting plates. So take your time. You might want to do this first and set it aside. So I did go ahead and place that on here. And let me show you how cute these came out. I am loving them. All right, so we've got them here. Do you notice too how they're slightly lighter than this? So it's an important thing that you know that you wanna use a slightly darker shade than what you want it to end up be because the glitter paper is gonna absorb some of that pigmentation. Okay, so we're gonna add these next. So I'm gonna put those right here in my silicone craft sheet so I don't lose them. And I'm gonna move that off to the side for you. Let's go ahead and take this other B. We're gonna add a dimensional to the back side of this one. Take off that paper backing for this one as well. And this one, I think I'm going to put a little bit here on an angle just for some visual interest. I'm tipping them so that they don't look exactly like in the same direction. And now I'm going to add those hearts. Liquid glue will certainly work, but again, we're live, so I don't want you to have to watch that dry. I'm going to use my glue dots. I'm going to pull back two dots that are exposed here. Remember that? Take your pick tool. That putty attachment is going to be really, really slick for these little tiny things. So I've got one here and I'm going to put the other one here and I am going to press those in place so they stick to the glue dot. This end now is going to help me lift them off. Here's the first one. I'm going to place that one right outside the ring here so it's overlapping. And I've got one other here that's going to go here to the side. You know, this plays up those wings beautifully, doesn't it? All right, let's put this on the card base, which I chose to be basic black. I did score it in half before you joined me. I'm going to go ahead and fold it. I'm a big fan of this bone folder for a nice crisp edge on my cards. Now you certainly could have added adhesive to this, but today I'm going to use dimensionals. I'm going to just change it up a bit because we're together. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I never make two cards the same, it seems. I know that my card is going to get mailed and this is a very large panel. So I'm going to be very generous with my dimensionals because I want to make sure that my card is not going to sag through the postage machine at the post office. My mom is a recipient of a lot of my cards, and she always says to me that they need more of these on the back because it can come out lopsided, and I couldn't agree more. So I'm telling you that from a person who receives cards. Make sure you use those 
so that they are well distributed. And then we'll place that here on the card base. Now I've got another card that I made using this exact same format that I wanna share with you. And you can see how this one has a slightly darker background than this one. It's the exact same card, there's no difference. It's just a matter of how much ink you place over the die to create a stencil background. Now I promised you four other cards and I can't wait to share those with you. So let me pull those out real quick. Let me set those aside. These cards that I'm sharing with you are all part of my monthly card kit. Now my monthly card kit is completely free. I give you the free pre-cut supplies to make a total of eight cards. That would be two each of four different designs. I give you the pre-cut cardstock and the designer series paper. I give you a video and a PDF tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions. So it's a great way for you to stamp with me from home. Now I give my card kit for free in exchange for a $50 product order using an exclusive card making kit host code. This month's kit is also going to include these beautiful pearlized doilies. Now, obviously you're gonna need some supplies. You're gonna need a couple ink pads. Obviously one is gonna be black. I'm also gonna include all the scrap card stock for you. My videos are loaded with tips. So if you don't think you can do this, guess again, I promise you that you absolutely can. And then the last two cards will be this one. Now it's really important that you're gonna use the exclusive card making kit host code when you place your order. Otherwise, I don't know your intended um, order is for the card kit itself. Let me turn the camera around. Let me give you a few more details about the card kit. Okay, sorry that it was a little jumpy there. I hit the wrong button at first. All right, my monthly card kit is only offered for a four day window. And I have to be honest with you that the kits are already half sold out today. And that's because those that sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter got notification about it first thing this morning. Now we've increased the number of card kits we're providing this month, but they're still selling out at record pace. And I think that has a lot to do with the quarantine because we're all home looking for craft projects and fun things to do. I don't know about you, but I'm stamping more than ever sending cards to family and friends to keep them encouraged and reminded that I'm still here thinking about them. So to get your free pre-cut supplies, you will need to place a $50 product order in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. You must use the exclusive card making hit host code. Otherwise I have no way of knowing that your order was intended for these free pre-cut supplies, the video and the PDF tutorial. So I provide these to you for free in exchange for that order. Now here is the best part. If you don't want the Honey Bee Bundle, you don't have to have it. You can order whatever you'd like. I make it super easy for you. So enjoy purchasing what you can use at home. Perhaps you have something similar that you wanna substitute with, that's totally okay. Now if your order happens to be large, $150 in product or more before shipping and tax, do not use the host code because Stampin' Up! gives you extra what we call Stampin' Rewards or free product. So if you use the host code on an order of 150 or more, you're gonna miss out on those. But you'll need to let me know that that size order was intended for the card kit. All you have to do is go over to lisasstampstudio.com, click on contact me and say, hey Lisa, I placed this order with this order number. It's more than $150, but I want the card kit and you're good to go. Now this card kit is only available starting today, which is May 13th through Saturday, which is May 16th while supplies last. And I have a feeling it's probably gonna sell out tomorrow. So if you are interested in getting these free pre-cut supplies in exchange for your order, please do not wait, place your order right away. I get people who are disappointed every single month and I try to accommodate as many of you as possible, but quite frankly, there's only so many supplies. Now, you may notice, too, on a couple of these cards that I use designer paper that you may not have recognized. I have been holding on to this paper for months waiting for this card kit. It comes from a retired product suite from Stampin' Up!'s largest sale of the year called Celebration, and it was called the Golden Honey Designer Series Paper. So if you're looking for it, it is no longer available. I saved it for you just for this card kit. All right, I want to check my notes to make sure that I haven't missed anything. My card making kit customers also receive an added bonus. They get a private invitation for a YouTube live event that I call Live with Lisa. During this event, 
I do numerous live demonstrations. They get a whole different bundle of tutorials and I do product prize giveaways. It's just my way of saying thank you for your card kit order. I also give that away to customers that order $25 or more in product, but they need to use my current host code. That would be a different code than the card kit. I know that could be confusing sometimes, but if you head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com and you click on the rewards section and you click on the classes section, you'll be able to see the differentiation there. All right, I have a promised mail date of no later than May 23rd for this month's card kit. And I sure hope that you will be joining us. I thank Megan for all her hard work and moderating tonight. And I've got good news for you. I want to make sure that you come back and join me live because I'm coming back to you on Memorial Day, which is Monday, May 25th. I'm looking at my calendar. Is anybody else in the same boat where the days are kind of blurring together? It'll be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for those of you that are interested in a catalog, uh, the new ones are coming. Look at that beauty. It's coming out on June 3rd. You can request your catalog on my website at lisastampstudio.com and click on catalogs or contact me. There'll be ways for you to get it there. I'll provide you with a free tutorial in exchange for your catalog purchase, which completely offsets the cost of the catalog. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, give it a thumbs up here on YouTube because it certainly helps. And I look forward to joining you again on Monday, May 25th for another great project. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Bye-bye.